Two of the biggest college football conferences, the Big Ten and Pac-12, are postponing all fall sports, including football, due to coronavirus. This comes as President Trump continues to press for football this fall. ESPN reports one of the areas of concern for all the major conferences is a rare and dangerous heart condition linked to COVID-19. ESPN says some college athletes have been diagnosed with it. Joining me now is Dr. Jonathan Dresner, who advises the uh, NCAA on cardiac issues, is, is the director of the UW Medicine Center for Sports Cardiology in Seattle. He's also the team physician for the UW Huskies, Seattle Seahawks, and Seattle Reign. Dr. Dresner, thanks for being with us. Um, so you see the cancellations from the Big, Big Ten and Pac-12. You also hear President Trump downplaying concerns. I, I want to play a bit of what he said late today. These are young, strong people. They won't have a big problem with the China virus. So we want to see college football start. And uh, hopefully a lot of great people uh, are going to be out there. They're going to be out there playing football, and they'll be able to fight it off. So what are the, the problems we're seeing with, with athletes in this way? Thanks for having me, Anderson. And I agree, these our young athletes are young and strong, but but this can be a, a serious problem. Um, and we our, it's our job to keep them safe on the playing field. Um, we learned uh, early on in the pandemic that COVID-19 can affect the heart. And about one in four hospitalized patients would have heart injury. Um, and it raised a lot of questions and concerns about patients um, who weren't in the hospital. Would patients who have mild symptoms or no symptoms have a uh, heart injury. And this is particularly important for our athletes who uh, put themselves through quite a bit of uh, exertional stress on the playing field where exercise can be a trigger for something like an arrhythmia or cardiac arrest if there is inflammation in the heart muscle called myocarditis. Um, more recently, we've been learning that some college and professional athletes are inflicted with myocarditis from COVID-19. Um, and I think we're just learning about this this issue uh, in our athletes, wow. and and it's definitely uh, raised our concern. So, so somebody can be asymptomatic, um, or just have a very mild case that they you know don't need to go to the hospital for, uh, and yet still have potential long term heart damage. That's correct, and um, we don't know how long term that is yet. This this is still still all very new, but but we are learning that uh, some athletes who really had no symptoms and go through uh, subsequent testing are being diagnosed with myocarditis. And the treatment of that short term is, is rest and recovery. And usually uh, through guidelines, you know, three to six months uh, later, um, most of those athletes can re return to play safely. Um, there are some rare circumstances where the heart muscle is uh, enough infected that it loses some function. There could be elements of heart failure and it could cause more long-term damage. And myocarditis is that you said it's inflammation of of the heart, or what exactly is it? Yeah, that? myocarditis. Yeah, it's inflammation of the heart muscle, um, and it uh, can lead to scar tissue in the heart, and that scar tissue can be a focus of an arrhythmia or abnormal electrical signal within the heart that could cause something like cardiac arrest. And I mean, obviously, the asymptomatic nature of coronavirus complicates. The job of keeping athletes safe, because unless they're being tested, you know, rigorously, you don't know that they have it. That's exactly right. It, it, it really uh, raises quite a bit of a challenge to understand uh, who has this and who is at risk for this. Um, and and I think it's important as we think about why some colleges are pushing back fall sports. You know, it's not just the heart issues, um, but what's been really important is that we don't want our athletes to get infected. And so if the pandemic is out of control in certain cities, if we don't have adequate testing in certain cities to ensure that when they aren't physically distancing on the playing field, uh, that they're not going to be infecting each other, it, it's hard to move forward with, with college sports. And what we're learning now about the heart and athletes has just raised that bar. So in terms of what we still need to learn before people can really return to sports safely at the college level, I mean, is it just a vaccine or, you know, is there hope that even without a vaccine, just learning more about this down the road will, will improve chances? I think there is hope without a vaccine. Um, you know, if everyone does the right thing and wears a mask and the, and the numbers fall and we meet some metrics by public health standards where we can begin to open up, then, then the risk declines. And if you combine that with some frequency of testing, 
to root out some of the, the athletes that might have infections, then you don't want them to spread it uh, amongst their teammates. Mm. I, I do think there is a pathway forward for sports, um, and it, it doesn't necessarily include a vaccine. I think when the pandemic is more under control, we have better testing, and we know more about the, the long-term health outcomes that I, I do think we'll be able to resume uh, sports. Yeah. Uh, it's really uh, fascinating and, and good to know about even if you're asymptomatic, you might have a condition. It's important for people to know. Dr. Jonathan Dresner, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. The wait is over.